last time on Ace Attorney. Now, now you read this part. If I must, a burglary turned brutal, and a busty brunette wearing blue was bashed in. What is with you and alliteration? I'm not paying you to editorialize, Bridget. You're not paying me at all. Ah, uh, you know what? Forget it. We don't need an intro anyway. Just start the video. You see. When I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, Mr. Sawin, when are you gonna learn you can't lie your way through life? Hold it right there! The prosecution has already said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record right here proves it. What do you gotta say to that, huh? Uh, what, you gonna tell me she our TV is powered by hamsters? I don't think so! You couldn't have heard a television or a video! Gah! I... well... Uh... The defense has a point. Thank you, Judge! Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? Of course he don't! No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself! Quite! Look at him up there, sweating bullets! Um... Ah! Uh, wait! I remember now. Mr. Sawit? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather... distraught. That's one way of putting it. Uh... My apologies, Your Honor. Don't apologize, just tell the truth! It's... Uh... It must have been the shock of finding the body. Uh -huh. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. And maybe this time you could tell it how it is instead of telling how it might be. Let's hear this witness testimony one more time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. Who uses a clock to kill somebody? Maybe Flavor Flav. You saw a clock. Well, I guess that would explain it. Uh-huh. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly, Your Honor. And those of you at home playing the drinking game where you take a shot every time I point out a contradiction, you may want to put water in your glasses, because it's about to get crazy. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. Oh, okay. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Mr. Saw. Can I call you Frankie Slimeball? I'm going to use that anyway. Are you honestly trying to tell people that a clock was used as a murder weapon? The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was this statue of the thinker. So, Mr. Sawit, how is this supposed to be a clock? What? You, with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? I'm your worst nightmare. Now just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey. I, I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Don't look like any clock I've ever seen before, Frankie! Your Honor! If I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. What? The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, someone could have told me. It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Actually, Your Honor, I've got quite a few problems with his testimony. There's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never even entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Oh, snap! Hmm, indeed. Judge, if you're gonna rest your eyes during the trial, at least slip some cool sunglasses on so no one else knows what you're doing. And speaking of knowing what you're doing, the witness knew that this was a clock because obviously he went inside the victim's apartment. You're lying, Mr. Sawit. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. Oh, I'll do better than that, Mr. Sawit. I can prove you were the one who killed her. It's all right here in the evidence. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound that you heard. Can I get a what? What? They love me. Order in the court. Intriguing. 
Please continue, Mr. Wright. Oh, you best believe I will, Your Honor. I am just getting started. But first, we have a few minutes so I can sign some autographs. The people love me here. All right, you know what? I'll get y'all after trial. Let me win this case real quick. Mr. Sawit, the sound you heard must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. The voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about that sign. Objection! This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? How can you say that, Payne? Just look at the witness's face! If you looked up guilty in the dictionary, you'd see him! Uh, I... I... That... That day... I... I never... Look! I... The clock... I heard... No! I mean... I saw... Saw... Well, that was unfortunate. Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It, it was him, I tell you! I saw him! He, he killed her! And he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order! Order in the court, I say! Your honor, a, a, a moment, please! There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims! It's tell. Mr. Wright! Please, your honor, why so formal? Call me Ace Attorney. You claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Indeed. Do you have any evidence? Your honor, do I look like that type of guy who would waste the court's time if I didn't have evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think it through carefully. Yes, your honor, the sound Mr. Saw had heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply examine the batteries, ask the neighbors, or I don't know, let's try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. That way there'll be no mistake. Your Honor, may I have the clock? Oh, this is pretty cool. I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. You call it strange? I call it awesome, Your Honor. I want a clock like this. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Before I tell you that, Your Honor, let me ask the prosecution a question. Mr. Payne, could you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. I'm sorry, what time? Ark! Well, Payne, I guess you're not as dumb as you look. Let me break it down for you. As you can clearly see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, let's see you try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh-oh. I don't like where this is going. What you talking about, Willis? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow... Yeah? It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three days slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, then you don't have a case! No, I got this! I had this case in the bag! Oh my adoring parents, where are you going? He's right. How am I gonna prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright? Give me a minute, Judge. My case just crumbled before my eyes. It seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. I'm well aware of what I'm lacking right now, Yorani. You don't have to rub it in my face and gloat about it. How could I let this happen? Yes, Your Honor. I understand. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Can you let me indict him instead? Oh, it's the same thing. Unfortunately. You say potato, I say potato. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. They treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. Look, Sawit, you can say whatever you want to about me, but don't go saying all lawyers are slime, because some of them are the most amazing people that you'll ever meet, including the lady standing next to me. God, I almost had him! Sorry, Larry. I'll let you down. There's nothing that I can do about it now. What was I thinking taking on this case? I knew I was Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Mia? I should've known! The Chief always has a way to save the day! So, what's the plan, Mia? I mean, Chief? Listen up, Wright. I'm all hands. I mean, I'm all ears. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! I'm trying, but I'm not as smart as you. You're more attractive and more intelligent. Chief, it's over! I can't prove that the clock was slow on the day of the murder. It's impossible! Unless, you mean I should do the impossible like Kamina? Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. 
assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right? Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Reason why the clock would be three hours slow? Huh. Wait a second! Maybe I can prove this! Thanks, Chief! You're a lifesaver! You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Yeah. Find it and let them have it. Okay! Well, Mr. Wright? What's up, J Money? You say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Oh, for sure. Have you found evidence to support this claim? But of course, Your Honor. I just wanted to build up a little bit of suspense. See, there's a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a shadow of a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Oh, y'all both about to see it. Y'all gonna feel real stupid for doubting your man Phoenix Wright. Tech down. Remember, everyone, the victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. Now, as we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours exactly. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't running three hours slow. It was nine hours fast. Don't you see? The victim hadn't reset her clock since she returned home. And that's why, when you struck her dead in her apartment, the time that you heard was wrong. Now I just gotta ask you one question. Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw it? Or should I say, Mr. Did it? Oh, oh, order! Order, I say! I'd like to order up a victory lap around the courtroom. Da, 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 da. Well, I am the greatest. This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your client? Tarred and feathered, I hope. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Good riddance. Mr. Wright? You can just call me Wynn if you want to. I mean, it's shorter. I, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. Ah, it was no big thing. Just doing my job, you know. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. That's because you've never seen me, Your Honor. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. That would make an awesome t-shirt. But I'm probably getting ahead of myself. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Wait, should we get a drum roll? Build up some suspense? Not guilty. Yeah. Who knew Japanese courtrooms had confetti cannons? And with that, the court is adjourned. So what do I do now? Should we just end the video here? Or is there more? It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were leaving their house. And on that day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. Mr. Sawit waited until after he left, then he let himself in to do his dirty work. But while he was searching her place, the victim unexpectedly returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. And well, we all know what happened next. She slipped on the floor and spilled Kool-Aid everywhere. Oh, hey, Bridget, it's another one of those time things. You mind reading it? Why should I do that? Ah, oh, come on, Bridget. You're not still mad about the intro, are you? I'm sorry. Could you please read it? August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Thank you, Bridget. That was amazing. Phew, I still can't believe we won. Right. Huh? Good job in there. Ah, oh, well, you know, I just doing my thing. Congratulations. Thanks, Chief. That means a lot coming from you, but... I gotta be honest, there's no way I would've won without you. I owe this victory all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. Well, you did tell me to be like communist, so I had to step up my manliness game, you know. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. Hey, you stick with me, me. I always end things on a satisfying note. Won't stop till I do. I've never seen the chief looking this happy before. She's extra cute when she smiles. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. That's not the reaction I was expecting. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What could possibly be wrong now? Ah, uh, Nick. Don't ah, uh, Nick me. I just got you not guilty. Why are you not happy? Don't worry about me. 
I'll be dead and gone soon. Well, that's good. Wait, I mean, no, that's bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, we won. You're innocent. The case is closed. You should be super happy. But my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone. Forever! Larry, she was never yours to begin with. Your little Cindy Wendy's a gold digger. You're better off without her. Congratulations, Harry. Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> uh, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this. Ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Oh, shot him down. Hey, Larry, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey, H here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? No, obviously it's for me, right? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that- Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Where's my memento? Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and she played me for a fool. Don't that just make you want to cry? <laughs> Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you, in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta go sympathizing with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Me? You're the one getting all the stuff around here, Chief. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Right. What the heck is she talking about? Does she want me to give him the rubber chicken? Oh, wait. The statue of the thinker. Yeah, she wouldn't have kept it if she didn't care about you. Check it out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to Cindy. Huh? Where'd you get that clock? From your little Cindy Wendy, okay? This is the clock that you made for her, Larry. She loved it so much that she took it with her when she traveled. Hmm, she probably just needed a clock is all. Oh, you think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to lug with you all the way to Paris. Come on, Larry, she likes you. Uh... Look, Larry, I'm not here to argue with you. Make up it what you will, but I'm telling you, Cindy liked you, man. Um... Hey, Nick. Yeah, what's up? I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Well, thanks, Larry. I'm glad to. Really? I am. Thanks. Aw, oh, look at those starry eyes. Gets me every time. Who says real men don't cry? Well, I hope that made Larry feel a little better. You know what would make me feel better? Where's Mia at? Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them people too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. I'll drink a toast to whatever body part you want, Chief. Oh, speaking of Harry. Larry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, partly at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Wait, is this officially a date? I have to write this down in my diary. <laughs>